Hey guys, so this is my kitchen space and it's kind of a little bit of a quirky kitchen. This is my sink from the 1950s, which I absolutely adore. So I'll often soak my telangia or my air plants in here. And I have a, like a little vermicomposter, which is a worm bin. There's some really cool black soil. <gasps> Up here, you'll see a drawbridge herb garden. So I wanted to have access to herbs really easily. And this is something built out of an old Ikea shelf. This is a plethranthus, the type of Cuban sage or Cuban thyme. I like to cook with this. It's actually quite fuzzy, but it's super fragrant. These little capillary tubes coming in. So this plant actually waters itself with some of these hydro spikes that I have in here. This is some succulents. This is a climbing onion, fun plant to grow. This is the mushroom plant, love cooking with this. When you take off a leaf, saute it, that's when it releases this subtle mushroom flavor. This is my African blue basil. It was actually mislabeled as Thai basil, and I was like, that's not Thai basil. I never want to lose this plant just because in the veins it gets this really beautiful purple color. It's not as temperamental as this regular basil that I'll cook with. This colander it has parsley in it. Put this in the sink and just water it. So it actually has a natural drainage within this particular colander. I picked this dish at a vintage shop. It just fits so perfectly. I wish I could have you smell this plant through the camera. It's fantastic to cook with. Oh yeah, this is like, it's so strong. I mean, if I breathe in a little bit too much, it'll like almost be like a peppery aroma in the back of your throat. This is one of my favorite tuberous vegetables. You'll know which side is up because the bottom won't have any slips. This will grow for years. This is a plant that I won't cook with. It's Euphorbia milii. It's actually rather poisonous has these little barbs. Some people would think that that's actually the flower. Flower is actually the little yellow insignificant plant in the middle. That colorful bract is a way to attract insects and to pollinate the flower. My little oxalis, which has its petals down at this moment. This is a ginseng bonsai ficus. I have this Lego type planter with a few different kind of cuttings. And then if we go over here, you'll see these suspended gardens. This is pineapple sage and this is the mushroom plant that I just showed you. This is a cutting off of it. My African blue basil cuttings, which are doing really well. Lavender, thyme, and some lemon balm. I love it because it's so DIY and it's simple. This is a little wick pulls the water up into the felt. So you don't have to water up here, you just water down here. This light, which doesn't give off much, was enough to start growing a regular English ivy, but it's variegated. This is a bromeliad plaumani, which is dying. Bromeliads only flower once, and then put all of their energy into these little suckers down below. These ones are going to be the new ones that you could eventually repot. This one I absolutely adore. This is probably one of 40 peperomia that I have. They're really an underserved house plant. They're relatively easy to take care of. It has this little succulent look. And I like that it has a similar feel to this one, which is Senecio macroglossus variegata. It likes a little bit more light. It likes to stay on the relatively dry side. I just think it looks absolutely adorable. People ask if this gets in my way when I cook, and it really doesn't. I kind of like them a little, like, wild. This old sled, which I just absolutely adore. These are not vines. These are little tubes that pull up the water. So all I need to do is actually water this versus up there. And I have space for one more. It would be really cool to 
get your advice of what kind of plant I should put up there. I was thinking maybe experimenting with a passion flower, but I don't know quite yet. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. These are some air plants that I did with these uh, geometric shapes. These are very easy to do if you get tubes and wires and then some Swedish ivy and I have a, a Peperomi grisio up here. This is a Cerastris mirabilis, a gorgeous plant. These are a Persian shields. I have a green one and I have a purple one back there. A cast iron plant moonlight which has beautiful speckles. This is an open terrarium, which I love. Some ivy and I've got the Senecio macroglossus right there. And some plants down here. I have an aloe that was given to me. A beautiful jasmine, a dracaena, and this is a croton. This is my vertical swing garden. It was one of the DIY projects that I did with my dad and basically used reclaimed wood and an old broom handle that was in the corner of this house for a while. And my dad hand cut the holes and we painted it. And people always ask me where the drainage goes and what the water comes here. And if I overwater them, they often go to the one below. And I try very hard not to overwater the ones on the bottom. So this is my tea cozy and I have lots of plants growing here from neon pothos to jasmine to Christmas cactus to this beautiful euphorbia that I actually got from my friend. I drink a lot of tea, if you can't tell, and I upcycle all of these into succulent planters afterwards. Is that poop or is that? No, that's a plant. I'm always on poop duty now. Plants and chickens don't go together. <laughs> don't you poop on his bag. That's why I have fences everywhere. <laughs>